<laughs> All right, take me to the 21st century, <laughs> alas. How do we get the millennials involved with jazz? You know, we got this thing um, where we take all of those street traditions and we do what we call a love riot, where it's, um, it's like a riot because it's crazy. You get all of these people, and sometimes you tell them, sometimes you don't. You go to a place where there's not usually music, like a restaurant or a subway, street corner. You know, we, we've done it on the slopes in Utah, literally anywhere, and we just start playing, and we create this energy. And you just get all these people from all over the place just coming into it, joining up. Sometimes we put it on, you know, like a Facebook or Twitter that we're going to be at a place. Don't tell anybody in details, and they come. And then what happens is all kind of craziness happens. <laughs> to the point that even at our shows, we'll play, and at the end of the show, you know, the people will be there, and they'll be expecting us to love right. So they'll wait at the end, <laughs> and they're like, are you going to do it this time? And we'll march with the whole crowd from a show. I never forget, man, we played at Carnegie in New York. And that's very, like, you know, straight. They don't have that kind of stuff. People standing on top of the seats. Next thing you know, it's like the energy can happen anywhere, basically. We might have to end this with a love ride. Oh, man. <laughs> but you See, need social media for that, right? Well, I not mean, we'll, we'll get to the end in a minute. But yeah. no, before we get to the end, tell me about how social media plays into that. Well, it's... It's more about the, uh, the interactivity. It can be through social media or it can be in person. It, it's just really about the idea of the audience having an experience and it's an interactive experience with music. It's not about, I don't know about this style or that style, but it's, you can be a part of this experience by joining us. And when you come out, that's what makes the music social. You can share it. You can dance to it, you can cry to it, it's, it's open. How do you get more millennials to connect with jazz and the jazz tradition? It's got to be an experience. Mm -hmm. It can't be something that's like a museum piece or something that is... Preservation Hall, no? I, I like them, yeah, that's my boys. Preservation Hall is a more museum piece approach. Yeah, it, it's got to be like, imagine if you grew up and you had an iPhone in your hand all the time, people constantly are trying to sell you stuff. Mm -hmm. And everything is basically about the exploitation of your youthful ignorance. So you take that concept of existence, <laughs> and then you take also the concept of the arts and music education being cut in schools and everything just being kind of upside down in terms of, in the popular culture, you'll, you'll never see anything that's remotely related to jazz or an instrument, except maybe like in an elevator or something like that. So then you have that whole thing that's happening, which makes it actually the perfect timing for you to bring this kind of music and this kind of experience to people because it's completely brand new to them. To them, it's like, wow, this is brand new. I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, real music. Right. Suppose, yeah. But the idea is actually, it's old. <laughs> it's just not around. So it has to be something that's unbelievable. Like, you feel it. It's not just you sitting there and watching it. It's like you're a part of it. Can you give me an example of how you do that? Oh, man. You got to come to a show. All right. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, it's kind of one example of what you could do is, uh, you know, you just don't stay on the stage. The stage <laughs> is everywhere. 